Welcome back everyone, ready for another deep dive. Today, we're gonna to be exploring the world of leadless pacemakers. We've got some incredible information from a medical document that outlines this cutting edge tech, and let me tell you, it is seriously impressive. We're talking about pacemakers, but not the kind you might be picturing. These are tiny, like really tiny. They get implanted directly into the heart, no wires, no big device under the skin, like the older pacemakers. Pretty wild, right? It's a huge advancement. It's amazing to think we can actually regulate a heartbeat with a device smaller than, well, think of a AAA battery. <laughs> Seriously, smaller than a AAA battery. That's just insane. I mean, I know medical tech is always moving forward, but yeah. wow, this is something else. Okay, so before we get too ahead of ourselves, can you break down how these leadless pacemakers actually work? Sure. Think of the heart like a pump, right? A really, really complex pump. And like any pump, it needs a good rhythm to work properly. Sometimes, though, the heart's own electrical system, it can have problems, and that can cause a slow or irregular heartbeat. That's where the pacemaker comes in. This little device, it's like a conductor, sending out those electrical signals at just the right time to keep the heart beating at a healthy pace. Okay, I like that. The conductor analogy, that makes it much easier to picture. So let's talk about how they actually get this tiny device into the heart. What's the process like? Is it major surgery? Well, that's the amazing thing about this technology. It's incredibly minimally invasive. No need for open heart surgery here. The whole procedure is done through a vein in the groin. Wait, through the groin? That sounds kind of intense. I know, I know. It sounds a bit much, but it's a pretty standard procedure. Basically, mm -hmm. they use a catheter, you know, a thin tube, yeah. and they guide it up to the heart using imaging so they can see exactly where it's going. So no big incisions or long recovery times? Nope. Most of the time, the procedure takes less than an hour and patients can head home the same day. Compared to the traditional pacemaker implants where you needed surgery and a much longer recovery, this is a game changer. And of course, fewer incisions means a much lower risk of complications like infection. So less invasive, faster recovery, lower infection risk. Sounds pretty amazing. Are there any downsides to this leadless pacemaker tech? Well, there are a few things to keep in mind. First of all, this is still a relatively new technology, so we're still gathering long-term data. Okay, that makes sense. What else is there? While it's a fantastic option, it's not suitable for everyone. For example, if someone needs pacing in more than one chamber of the heart, we call that dual chamber pacing, they wouldn't be a candidate for a leadless pacemaker right now. At this point, leadless pacemakers are only designed for single chamber pacing. Got it. So it's great, but not a one size fits all solution for every heart rhythm issue. Anything else that people should know about if they're considering this? Yeah. Another thing to think about is MRI compatibility. You see, traditional pacemakers have come a long way. Now, they can usually work with MRI scans under certain conditions, but these leadless pacemakers, they're not quite there yet. Those strong magnetic fields in an MRI can really mess with the device. Hmm. That's good to know. So if someone thinks they might need an MRI sometime in the future, that's something they need to discuss with their doctor. Exactly. It's a conversation they need to have to make the best decision for their own situation. Right. It's all about weighing the pros and cons. Yeah, absolutely. So we've talked about who this might not be the best fit for, but what about daily life for someone who does have a leadless pacemaker? Are there things they need to watch out for or special precautions? Well, one thing to consider is the battery. Like any battery, it has a lifespan. Current models, they're expected to last about 10 years. But it's important to have regular checkups with your doctor to keep an eye on how it's functioning and how much battery life is left. 10 years. That's pretty impressive for a device that small. Yeah. But what happens when the battery does finally run out? At that point, you would need to decide about getting it replaced. Right now, the batteries aren't rechargeable, so a new pacemaker would have to be implanted. But the good news is, Replacing a leadless pacemaker is really similar to that initial implantation, still minimally invasive. Yeah, that's good. So yep. all in all, a pretty straightforward process. Yeah. Now I'm curious, are there any specific activities or, I don't know, devices that people with leadless pacemakers should be careful around? There are a few, mainly things that generate strong electromagnetic fields. These can potentially interfere with how the pacemaker works. I see, I see. Like, what kind of things are we talking about? Well, some examples would be... Um, Arc welders, certain types of industrial equipment, even some medical procedures like electrocautery where they use heat to seal tissue, those can sometimes cause issues. Okay, so those are some specific things to be aware of. Yeah. But what about everyday stuff, like common household electronics? Oh, those are totally fine. But it's always a good idea to talk to your doctor if you have any concerns about specific devices or situations. 
So it's more about being mindful and checking in with your doctor rather than completely avoiding everything, right? Exactly. There's no need to live in a bubble. Just be aware and keep those lines of communication open with your doctor. That makes sense. All right. So we've covered a lot about what leadless pacemakers are, how they're implanted, the pros and cons. What about the future? Anything exciting on the horizon for leadless pacemakers that you're particularly looking forward to? Oh, absolutely. This field is moving so fast. Researchers are working on even smaller designs, potentially incorporating more features beyond just pacing. Imagine a leadless pacemaker that could monitor other heart parameters too, giving doctors even more data to work with. Wow, that would be incredible. It really is amazing to think about how far this technology has come and what it means for the future of cardiac care. It really is, and the research doesn't stop there. We're also seeing progress with wireless pacing technology, where the pulse generator and electrodes, they're combined into one single tiny unit that goes right into the heart muscle. Wait, a single unit? No separate components? That's revolutionary. Are those available yet? Not quite yet, but they're in development, and early results are super promising. Faster recovery times, even lower risk of complications. It's a really exciting time to be in this field. It's mind-blowing to think how far we've come. From those big, bulky pacemakers with wires to these tiny devices that are almost invisible. Talk about progress in medical tech. It's pretty incredible. Okay, so let's take a step back and recap. Leadless pacemakers, they're definitely shaking things up in cardiac care. Less invasive, faster recovery, a good option for many patients. And let's not forget all that potential for even more improvements. Smaller designs, added features, going fully wireless. It's a great time to be alive, especially if you're into medical tech. Okay, before we wrap things up, I want to leave our listeners with something to think about. As this technology keeps developing, what are some of the things that you feel are important to consider? That's a great question. One thing that comes to mind is, well, making sure everyone has access to this technology. Like any medical advancement, we need to make sure the benefits reach everyone who needs them, no matter their background or financial situation. Yeah, that's a really important point. These advancements, they're amazing, but they only really matter if everyone who needs them can actually benefit. It's like a reminder that as medical tech keeps getting better, we also need to focus on making healthcare more equitable for everyone. I completely agree. Along with making sure everyone can access this technology, I think it's also crucial to keep researching the long-term effects and, of course, looking for ways to make it even better. We need to make sure that this isn't just effective, but that it's safe and sustainable for the long haul. Absolutely. Well, I think we've covered an incredible amount of ground today. Leadless pacemakers, they're a huge step forward in how we approach cardiac care. Less invasive, faster recovery, a fantastic option for so many people. And it's exciting to think about what's coming next. Yeah, it really is. We talked about how they're implanted, the benefits, the things to consider, even got a glimpse into the future of this incredible technology. I hope you found this deep dive as fascinating as I did. It was a pleasure being here and sharing my thoughts with you and everyone listening. And to all of you listening, we really encourage you to keep learning about this. There's always more to discover. And who knows, maybe you'll even find some things we didn't get to today. That's the beauty of knowledge. It's a journey, not a destination. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. We'll catch you next time for another deep dive into, well, whatever fascinating topic we uncover next. Until then, stay curious.